Hello, Velma. How are you? I'm fine. How are you today? I am well. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so, looking forward to it. Thank you. So we are very fortunate to be here with Velma in anticipation of the May 13th event around rethinking women's leadership in business in collaboration, of course, with Andy Simon and the Women Business Collaborative. And as I've interacted with some of the participants in particular, Velma stood out as someone who really, really wanted to have this kind of conversation with. So welcome, my good friend. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Tell it's so good to have you. Tell the world, who are you? I am Dr. Velma Delavo. I'm a former leader and executive with Booz Allen Hamilton, and I am now really in a process of figuring out um, how I'm going to impact the world next. So I'm looking forward to this conversation about women leadership and the importance of it, especially given this moment in time. Excellent. Excellent. And and as you kind of reflect backwards, reflect on where we are and reflect forwards, yeah. brought a sense sort of what is your perspective on leadership? And then we can dive in deeper. Yeah, I think leadership is very much about um, people say this a lot. People use the word servant leadership, but it's truly about helping to impact the lives of people around you in a positive way. Um, in the broadest sense that you're not just looking at um, your particular agenda, but you're really trying to serve a larger agenda, but you have to take the time to listen and understand what that agenda is. Um, and then you have to understand the kinds of things that need to happen in order to drive it forward. And sometimes it's not about just the technology. Many times it's not. It's really about taking time to understand what people need to see that vision what people need to get the support they need. Uh, and many times people uh, aren't even articulating uh, what that looks like. And sometimes you have to have the skills as a leader to pull that out of them. And so then people start to see themselves. They first see the vision, then they see themselves in the vision. And then they start to see how they can drive, help to drive that agenda. And that's the work of a leader, I think, is taking the time to figure that out not just saying this is where we're going, everybody follow, because they won't. Yeah. Yeah. Without and that, that was yeah. very well said. And that was one of the key things that grabbed me in both being introduced to you and likewise in our conversation. You bring that delicate balance between the human element, the technology element, and it truly is a delicate balance. Yeah, it is. Um, I we use this term a lot, I think, in the industry is this whole idea of having presence. Um, and that's a kind of nuanced thing. And people say sometimes that having presence is about the individual, uh, but I think the innate thing about it is it's not so much about me, it's about the people I represent. And so it's the followership that ends up getting reflected, I think in leadership. And a lot of times people have a very loud voice, um, but once they leave the room, then there are other voices about why it's not going to work, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. that silent sabotage that happens that people um, sometimes don't articulate, but if you understand um, who your people are and how they think and what's important to them, it will help you to get to the, to the bottom of what's needed in order to, to refine the vision and drive it forward. Yeah. And you're calling out a very, very crucial distinction. And I'd love for your thoughts on this. And in particular, a lot of leaders feel like they don't have to, as they emerge, if you will, in the organizational context, they feel like, well, you know, I don't need the details. And what ends up happening is they get separated from the details. And then they say, well, wait a minute, I need the details. So then you get sort of a, an imp and a kind of back and forth. What strikes me in what you're describing, it's not about the details. It's about the nuances. As a leader, you have to be aware of the nuances so you can leverage them in advancing yeah. forward with, with the organization, with the team. I'd love your thoughts on that, Velma. So sometimes we call this sort of change management. Um, a lot of times when organizations are moving forward, there's this fear that uh, people don't see themselves in the organization or their particular function is being left out. It's um, And it's very interesting that Sometimes it's not about what people say, but about what they don't say, 
if mm-hmm. nobody's articulating your particular uh, skill set or some, some capability that you've developed over some period of time, uh, and it starts to become less and less of the dialogue, you start to feel like you don't belong anymore. So I think it's those are kind of nuances that people don't don't pay attention to, but they really do matter. Yeah. Um, and I also think that you have to trust your team uh, and your leaders with the details. You, mm-hmm. you do have to know enough to know um, and to measure um, when things are not going in the right way, way before they happen. And so you have to understand what those indicators are and you have to develop a common expectation with other leaders that you are leading what's expected um, and develop some level of trust that people are going to tell you before it becomes a, a problem. So I think those kinds of things you have to establish up front, but you have to really demonstrate to people that you trust them to, to go deep into those details. Um, the nuances have to do also with demonstrating that you believe uh, that people have what it takes to get the job done. And sometimes it's as simple as complimenting those people during a during a period of time where you're supposed to be presenting, um, but you're also representing that team and you have to re- remember to, to compliment them for the work that they're doing and to let everyone know that you are part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. And, and I think those are the things people just don't think about, but they're really important because they give you fellowship and they give you alignment and people will sometimes um, work harder because of that recognition and respect, that mutual respect yeah. is really important, then they might uh, work for an extra uh, 5% uh, increase. Yes, yeah. yes. You're, so de- de- definitively, it's the right degree of details in order to be able yeah. to leverage the nuances. And and I have to say, you've used a very key word, at least twice in my counting, followership, which yeah. is reminiscent of Mary, Mary Parker Follett, who who Drucker actually called the prophet of management, if you will. Very, mm-hmm. very vibrant uh, 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 female in our in our rich history, if you will. So yeah. very powerful. So, I, so I'd like to kind of just sort of nudge a little bit, you know, as you kind of consider the landscape of where we are, where we're headed, you know, male leadership, female leadership. What what do you see? What do you see happening out there? So I think everybody's sort of rethinking what's important to them right now because of what we've all gone through with COVID-19. We've had a a chance to sit with ourselves. And sometimes we don't do that because we're so busy. So it's forced a lot of us to think through, what am I doing with my life? Um, Who am I impacting? What's my legacy? Um, Who do I need to reconnect with? And starting with myself. And so I think people are questioning a lot of things right now. Which organizations do they want to belong to? I mean, there are some statistics that show there's a trend in people leaving, 25% of the workforce leaving um, to do something else. And so they've actually, uh, for some reason, their thinking has led them to, I need to be in a different organization. Um, And a lot of people really think about what I call the work family. I really do want to um, and need to spend time with people that matter to me, that I enjoy working with, and that I'm doing something that's purposeful. And in many cases, if if it's a if you're losing energy, time, sleep in an organization, then you have to rethink why you're really there, right? Are you really getting the respect? Um, that you need? Are people thrilled for and, and value your talent and your leadership? Those things are really important. So I think moving forward, there is a real need for uh, the kind of nuances we're talking about to be recognized and celebrated. And so as people are moving to new organizations, sometimes folks forget that they're interviewing you too. You're interviewing them, but they're interviewing you too, because they want to be in a place that they feel like they belong. Um, and I think there's there's so many major issues right now. We're in such a weird place in history where um, there's a need for different kinds of leadership, the kind that, in, um, that people feel uh, some passion, some emotion around following. 
And, and I think in many ways, people are looking for that, that connectedness that sometimes we um, dismiss. But I think it's a huge factor when we look at pay and um, all these other things, health insurance and whatnot. There is this, this feeling you want to get that I belong to something that's really doing something important. And so what is that thing we're doing and how do you work together to achieve that thing? Um, and do I want to be a part of that? Very eloquently said it. And some, some key words, I mean, that you, you really mentioned, you know, recognizing where we are, uh, yeah. celebrating, if you will, very, very key. And, and definitively thinking about what is it that I want to belong to and with, and what do I give my, what do I, what do I submit yeah. myself to? In so many ways. I give my time and energy. And that's a very important word for me. Most people that know me understand that um, I have a certain amount of energy that um, I bring my own energy source. I do. Yep. Yep. And I look for organization and people that also bring energy that are not just sucking that energy from you, but also giving you some as well. And so I think it's really important that. Um, we think about what am I giving my energy to, you know, yes. Um, yes. am I getting yes. a return on investment for that energy? Yep. The, for yes. the thing yes. that I love to do, uh, am I getting a return for that? So I think it's a, it's an interesting way um, that I think about um, uh, how to spend time. And I, in an earlier part of my life, I learned from my mother and, and um, I've learned so much from my mother and my father who had always pearls of wisdom. Um, and one of the things my mother really taught me was to be careful about how um, I am spending, expending that energy. And that people that are draining me of that will keep me from my purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes I had to learn that earlier in my life is to sort of jettison uh, a number of folks or, or limit the time that I spend with them because they just continue to pull from that energy, but I'm not getting a return for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Very, very eloquently said. And, and you, and very much so in the same vein, energy and time have been so foundational in my experience to everything we do. Yeah. It's a limited resource. And, you, and exactly as you said, you have to bring that which feeds your soul. Yes. And that's very, very key. So I definitely appreciate that. So, so I, I have a broad question. If you okay. are able to have a conversation with all the CEOs in the world, the broadest reach that, that we can, and, and specifically from a business, what would your message be to them critically? I actually think I'm going to have to think about that some more. Okay. I do. That's a really, really important um, question. I think that um, CEOs have so much to think about, especially those that are leading organizations during this uncertain time. Um, and so I think they've got to look at um, what the possible futures look like, the trends, the, the um, competitive landscape, um, what what technologies will actually impact the future that they're looking at and where do they really place their bets in terms of the direction that the firm has to go. And they have to look at so many things, their digital strategy, um, their risk posture on how mm -hmm. they're really going to look at enterprise risk, look at um, supplier risk, um, and identify all those vulnerabilities and address them. And then they also have to lead this workforce that has a balance of skill and also embody that culture. So I think for me, I would very much um, put some emphasis on culture right now mm -hmm. because it is, I think, more relevant than people uh, realize that folks are looking for organizations that have not just stated um, social responsibility, but demonstrated social responsibility, what kind of things are, uh, is the organization doing to really showcase that? So I think it's a much more well-rounded than just um, the traditional uh, pieces of 
um, competitive analysis, uh, strategy, things like that. Those are important. Risk has become more and more important, which is why I focused a lot on su supply chain risk management um, in addition to strategy. So I think it's time right now for folks to step back and say, who are we as an organization? Who do we want to be? Um, what does that mean culturally? What kind of people are we trying to attract? Um, because as people grow exponentially um, and they start to pursue and win work, you need to pay attention to your culture. Yeah. 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 And it truly, it, it truly is the glue and fabric that binds us as an organization to your yes. point. Exactly. Excellent. Papa. So an, another sort of key question, especially given the conference and we're, we're looking at uh, women uh, leadership and business and what have you, you know, how can we be, I'll say partners, co-supportive males and females in the workplace? Well, you know, guidance and perspective there. You mean in terms of men and women, how can we really partner together? Yeah, and, and really support all of our missions for a greater whole and, and from that vantage point. Yeah. So there's a, a interesting perspective that I have, which is when people say, what do I need to do differently um, to support women as men, male leaders? And I, on the one hand, I say, do exactly the same thing you do with talented male um, leaders. And when you have talented male leaders, typically what I see happening that doesn't happen enough for women um, leaders is that these folks are, um, first of all, there's a, it, it's clear that that leadership has confidence in them. Mm -hmm. That is stated in terms of um, what assignments people receive, what support and resources they get, how they are discussed and talked about, the kind of language that's used to describe their impact, um, and how they're even recognized at a meeting, how people will um, affirm the statements that they make. It becomes clear to everyone in that organization that that person is recognized um, and valued as a leader. And I think that there's a certain amount of advocacy that happens where um, these leaders are just given key opportunities. Um, they are part of the private conversations about what matters, how the mm -hmm. priorities are shifting, where the funding is, where the investment is going next year. And so there's a knowledge um, that you're really part of the fabric of that organization and you have the backing and the resources and you are able to move um, with confidence. And also you get the feedback that the uh, direction is changing or that you're focusing on the wrong things or there needs to be a readjustment, right? So that happens in a much more deliberate way. I think with some of, um, when some male leaders actually celebrate their colleagues and the folks that they're pulling up, that needs to happen um, with more from male leaders to female, uh, talented female leaders. It's not, and to me, when I say do the same thing, that's what I mean. Yeah. Whatever you're doing for them, you do, yeah. right? But the other thing that I think too that, um, that is a little different sometimes is that women leaders um, will sometimes bring a different perspective. And just like any diverse uh, set of leaders do. They just bring different perspectives. It's like having a, you believe that the problem is three-dimensional, but it's actually n-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And the problem is if you have a three-dimensional problem and you're only solving and addressing three aspects of the problem and there are seven other pieces that you haven't even thought about, then you miss the boat. Yep. And I think that's what happens sometimes is, um, it's encouraging dissent and a differing point of view also. If showing that you value that is, is really important because sometimes people walk away from meetings um, without saying the very thing that needs to be said. And so it doesn't get heard. It doesn't get vetted. It doesn't become part of the discussion. And you don't, you don't solution around it because nobody talked about it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and eloquently integrating a lot of things, and I, and I, in particular, 
the fabric of the organization and then approaching yeah. it through the nuances. I, I love the way that you, you brought those two together and very much deliberately. Leadership yeah. doesn't mani manifest happenstantially. You know, we get lucky yeah. happenstantially, but leadership yeah. is very deliberate and intentional. I, I really appreciate that, Velma. Thank you. You know, yeah. definitely respecting your time. You know, any last words of wisdom before we sign off, my 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 dear dear friend, and and by all means, anything you'd like to share. So I um, have been a leader in STEM industries for a while, and in R and D and manufacturing and 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 of late management consulting. Um, and in cybersecurity. And I think that there is a need um, for us to talk about the kinds of problems that uh, need to get solved, that we need more leaders. We've got so many challenges, whether it's food insecurity, climate change, interconnected risk, understanding those things, predicting them, solving them uh, are, is really critical. So we need a lot of leaders to enter into the, the STEM arena. And for me, it's, it's, um, it's, it's also about solving, which has become a, a major factor now is people want to solve, they want to be part of organizations that are doing something important and impactful. And I think that um, there's increased recognition that there's a need for a diverse set of leaders to come to the table to address these issues. And I also want to say that solving these problems, they're not just hard. Um, it can be fun. It can actually take you, you know, all over the world. I have lived in um, play, different places all over the globe. So I think that it's a rich life. Uh, it's not just about the difficulties you hear about that, that women or minorities have in leadership. It's a necessary for us to, to take on those roles. And, and I think when we think about what our ancestors have had to um, kind of work through and sacrifice on our behalf, they would be very happy to have the problems that we have today. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's, a, that's an incredible note to, to really end on because it's both the celebrations as well as the challenges that That's make right. the journey worthwhile. So th th tremendous. Thank you so much for making the time, Velma, to catch up. You you bring a, a perspective that is wide and deep. And I think this, especially this, this conversation echoes it. And folks can, by all means, you'll be on a panel uh, coming up on the 13th and people can, can really join that and, and engage even further. So thank you so much, Velma. Thank you. My pleasure. And for, of course, those listening in and those, uh, that will be joining us. We look forward to it. Go ahead and please invite as many folks as, as the outreach can, can sustain relative to the 13th event. And uh, you'll have some great speakers very much in the same vein as Velma. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.